Hello everybody, what's happening? Neil back once again with another quick film review for you. Today, I'm going to be taking a look at Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, directed and written by James Gunn, who's now behind the helm of all three Guardians movies, and that's very, very nice to see. I'm so happy he got to complete his trilogy. Spoilers! There will be spoilers! So, you have been warned. This movie is definitely the most emotionally satisfying of the three Guardians films that I felt. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of tear-jerking moments here, and there's also a lot of evil animal abuse going on here as well, and uh, that's how evil the high evolutionary uh, villain is here, who's really well played you know the actor did a great job with it but i'm just not crazy about just another purple bad guy it's like <laughs> you know like how many purple bad guys do we need after kang and i mean i don't know galvatron and you know there's so many purple bad guys uh so yeah i don't know purple's just a bad guy color i guess um but uh there are some some great highlights here uh, a couple of disappointments but uh, overall, it's it's a fun time, and uh, I really think it does deserve its box office. Uh, this review is clearly uh, quite a bit late, you know, so that's why I'm spoiling it, and it doesn't really matter now. Uh, if anyone wanted to see it, they've seen it by now, I'm sure. But this is just my take on it. So anyway, we're going to get into the story, which is uh, very imaginative, very creative, and, uh, you know, very visually pleasing as well, uh, you know, the, the, the decisions they chose with the writing here. It's, it's mainly about Rocket Raccoon's origin. So Rocket, once again, played by Bradley Cooper, and his uh, younger self is actually played by Sean Gunn, who uh, also plays Craglin. So good for him. He's got a couple of roles there in the same movie. And... There's a lot of team changes, and uh, yeah, it is all about uh, the high evolutionary's you know plan and everything uh, to create the perfect being and the perfect society. Really, I know that seems to be his ultimate goal. There, uh, we finally get Adam Warlock, the man-child in this case, who's not wasn't really much of a man-child in the original Silver Age Marvel comics, like he, he first appeared in Fantastic Four and they called him him, but then later they changed that to Adam Warlock in the in the 70s, um, and he's a very powerful Superman-like character, but he's a big mama's boy at the same time, and I was a bit disappointed by that, um, even though it's another uh, really good performance here uh, in that for that character, uh, Will Poulter plays Adam Warlock here. Um, so it, it, this can all get very convoluted. I'm going to have to just try to, you know, truncate the story a bit here. I'm not going to talk about everything. I'm not going to spoil every little last detail. But uh, but this movie, uh, you know, it does... Sh it is. It does have a great showcase for a lot of these characters. Nebula, Drax, and Mantis all shine. Uh, at the beginning of the film, Quill is... A, he's a mess. He's an absolute drunken mess at the start of this movie. And... Um, yeah, it's uh, it's all about Gamora, of course, because his Gamora is dead while this other Gamora is still alive, thanks to the events of Endgame. And, of course, you have to see Endgame. You have to see pretty much everything to fully understand what's going on here. If, if you haven't seen the first two Guardians of the Galaxy movies, then... Yeah, you, know, you could be in trouble. So definitely do your research, by the way. Um, but anyway, after Endgame, we have a... Uh, I believe a younger Gamora, a slightly younger anyway, and um, so because she, the older version died in the Infinity War, that was the one that was in love with Peter Quill, the human, um, but she doesn't want any part of him, you know, the new one, so he's trying to rekindle that romance that doesn't exist in her head, but he's dying inside, you know, because... He's seeing her, you know, she winds up uh, showing up with the Ravagers and everything, and uh, uh, led by uh, Sylvester Stallone. And, uh, yeah, so things are complicated between those two. Um, Nebula gets some upgrades, uh, including this Mega Man arm cannon, which is really cool, uh, really nice. Actually, she kind of reminded me a bit of Blue Beetle on DC's side, and I don't know if they're kind of making fun of that or what there was a couple of winks to the audience i think there, there's also a, a reference to 2001 a space odyssey in this film with the circular shot 
Um, it, it, you know, there's a lot of little references here that are fun for film fans uh, to pick out. But anyway, back to the story. The story is, uh, you know, mainly involving all these characters that are, are doing well, except for Peter. Um, but Adam Warlock shows up out of nowhere uh, and injures Rocket Raccoon, as well as several other members of the team. And uh, he tries to capture him, but his efforts are thwarted, and uh, he winds up uh, escaping. And uh, then we see Sean Gunn's Craglin, who's learning to master the whistle-needle weapon thing that he inherited from Yondu. And uh, he's hanging out with this space dog with telekinesis named Cosmo. And... Uh, uh, I believe it's uh, I believe the dog is played by the actress from uh, Borat subsequent uh, movie film, um, and she's very good. She's this Russian dog that was sent into space, but she, now she's got telekinesis and she can talk. And uh, yeah, I'm falling for it. What can I say? I mean, there was a cat in Captain Marvel, and everyone fell for that. And I'm falling for the dog in Guardians Three. Hey, I'm a sucker for a dog, for a cute dog, a red. Uh, retriever, it looks like, uh, really, in, in the film. So, very cool. Uh, it helps to have seen the holiday special, though, to kind of explain Cosmo the dog and other things, too. Like, Kevin Bacon was in that. It was bizarre. So, anyway, the High Evolutionary, okay? He's this bad guy of no redeeming value whatsoever. And he created these gold people that were in Volume 2 called the Sovereign. And Adam Warlock is their champion uh, of the Sovereign. He was created by the high evolutionary i assume from his mother's dna i guess um and yeah i mean adam warlock okay i gotta talk about this character briefly i mean he's he's a silver age character he was used quite a bit during the infinity gauntlet comic books the original storyline and uh, infinity war he was the, the leader of infinity watch and all this infinity stuff and he was actually a guardian of one of the infinity stones and uh, he was always a lot more mature, you know, uh, and, and, you know, a little bit more responsible, I guess. Uh, certainly less of a mama's boy. Uh, he used to battle with Thanos and Magus and, you know, all the or Magus or whatever they called him. All these characters that were super duper powerful. He's basically Superman, you know. Um, so I was slightly disappointed that he wasn't in... Infinity War, uh, but there was really no time for him, right? There's so many characters in that film and also in Endgame by the end of that as well. So, yeah, too much, you know, too much to explain. So I understood why they uh, saved him for later. Uh, he's an artificially created being who is, uh, yeah, I mean, he's basically Superman with some similar powers anyway. Uh, you know, the the Sovereign, the, the gold-faced people, uh, you know, consider him to be the, the best of them. And they're all very, you know, proud people, of course, you know. Um, and the High Evolutionary is a little bit disappointed in him, but he also apparently let him out too early. So Adam Warlock's uh, brain, I guess, wasn't fully matured to adulthood by the time he cracked him out of there. Maybe he didn't want him to be an adult, but uh, in either case, it's it's too bad for me, but that's just for me as a comic book fanboy that Adam Warlock isn't as cool as he is in the comics. You know, with all respect to uh, Will Poulter, who plays him, um, probably, probably remember him from The Maze Runner and a whole bunch of movies that he's been in. Um, he's a very good actor, but, uh, but the, the character just wasn't quite what I was hoping for, but that happens with these Marvel movies. We get a different adaptation, uh, quite frequently, especially with supporting characters. I just wish that he was in the movie maybe a bit more. Um, again, the movie does seem to really uh, focus on the high evolutionary who, um, you know, he ordered, uh, Adam Warlock to try and capture Rocket Raccoon, because Rocket Raccoon has a unique brain. He's, he's smarter than the uh, average experiment. And there's a lot of animal cruelty experiments going on here. If you're super sensitive to that, even though the animals are CGI animals, um, it's really kind of bizarre and freaky when we see like a, a rabbit crossed with a spider, or at least a like cyber, cyborg spider, I guess it was. Um, and, you know, there's a, a cute otter, uh, Lila, and she's got robot arms and stuff and it's just you know it's 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 pretty heartbreaking quite frankly and, and a little bit disturbing for kids i think for small kids for young kids older kids i think will be okay with that 
Um, so anyway, the whole movie turns out to be really about, you know, um, uh, saving Rocket's life because he's badly wounded. Uh, and they do. They do save his life later. So he joins the fray. And then the high evolutionary decides to destroy all of his creations on this anti-Earth, killing all the animal hybrids that were there, all these uh, innocent life forms. But to him, they're just experiments, so they don't matter. No big deal uh, to him, yeah. So in this uh, devastation of the planet, uh, Adam's mother is actually caught in the explosion, and he winds up going off on a rage against the Guardians and, well, just basically anybody, I guess, in a blind rage. Um, and he should be going after the High Evolutionary if he knew, you know, he's the one that, that set off all these explosions. But I guess he just ignorantly assumed that it was the Guardians and he went after them, uh, which is a bit odd, but that's okay. Um, the heroes wind up saving all the kids and everything that are on this ship uh, and they also wind up saving all the animals uh, that were on the ship. And it looks like the Peter Quill is going to die, but Adam Warlock winds up saving his life. So at least he learns, uh, you know, what the good side is and all that stuff. Um, so after defeating the High Evolutionary, you know, ripping off his face and <laughs> revealing that, uh, well, Rocket basically did some serious damage to him in a flashback, after he killed Lila and his other friends. Um, so, yeah. So the High Evolutionary, we presume, is is done, is dead. And, uh, yeah, the, the team winds up going uh, mostly their separate ways. Uh, you know, Nebula and Drax uh, team up to stay on the planet to, you know, help oversee all these kids, these white-haired children that, you know, were, were created. Um, and uh, Peter Quill goes back to Earth because he wants to uh, go reunite with his grandfather so hey why not uh and um you know everyone seems to go their own way uh rocket and and uh, groot though they they stick with the team uh for quite a while and in the mid credits we get a very cool scene showing the newest version of the team uh which uh it is on this planet trying to save people from these approaching creatures is like a herd of vicious creatures coming towards them and uh yeah it's a very new team uh, led by rocket who is uh, now the captain of the team you know he's he's the leader of the guardians now and uh yeah it's a very interesting team <laughs> to say the least um and the mid credits scene is is fun i mean they talk about their favorite songs and and then they play that same song from the first film which was um uh, come and get your love by redbone i believe um so yeah that song's been used a million times but uh but you know it's a great song so hey why not one more time uh and then at the end of the credits there's this little post credit scene uh in, involving quill and his grandfather uh Talking about, you know, like, not wanting to do chores and things. Anyway, it's kind of a nothing scene. It's not really worth sticking around for in the theater uh, unless you really want to. Um, it's very short. So, um, yeah, I mean, the story played out pretty much the way that it should, you know. And, and it was nice to see the new team in the end, uh, you know, in the mid-credits there. Uh, a very, uh, a very nice, diverse group of, like, animals and aliens and stuff. So, a fun time overall. One very emotional scene involves Rocket as he's dying and he's in, like, limbo, you know, on his way to heaven, basically. And he bumps into Lila, his uh, beloved otter friend. Uh, and they have this very emotional scene. And it got me. You know, the actors, uh, Bradley Cooper and Linda Cardellini, who played uh, Mrs. Barton, you know, Hawkeye's wife in previous Marvel movies. Um, she plays Lila. Uh, fantastic, fantastic acting here. And the CGI was just, oh, my goodness, very, very heartbreaking and tear jerking. And yeah, it was it was it got me a bit choked up. What can I say? And uh, I'm sure I wasn't the only one. The songs here are, of course, vital and traditional for these Guardians films. Uh, Peter will pop in a cassette and, uh, and, and his beloved Walkman that he almost died for uh, before Adam Warlock saved him. Um, then the song will play, you know, uh, at full volume to carry the action sequence. It'll go from inside his 
you know, his, his, his earbuds, his headset, his head, headphones, and it'll go right to the scene. So there'll be a Beastie Boys song or uh, Faith No More, We Care A Lot. Uh, nice to hear that song in the, in the film. Um, and uh, pretty appropriate as well, you know, that, that original Faith No More lineup uh, song. Uh, not enough people have heard that, I think. Uh, I still have Badlands by Bruce Springsteen in my head, of course, after leaving the theater. So thanks, James Gunn. You put that in my head. <laughs> no, it's a good song. It's just, wow, like the, the, the music in the film is so powerful that it really does carry the, the film, like a lot of great films do, um, you know, with good use of uh, pop rock songs. So, you know, in the end, in this film, we get some great character progression. Uh, we get some really funny moments, which was great to see. And, uh, you know, there's always like that kind of morbid humor that we get in James Gunn movies, which is great. Uh, Nathan Fillion is actually really funny here, uh, as is Dave Bautista. Uh, and, uh, yeah, there's just a lot going on in this film. It is kind of packed, you know, it might be too packed. Uh, and the high evolutionary, I mean, he was an okay villain. He was really well played, you know, by the actor, but it's just not as powerful, it seemed, uh, you know, as maybe he could have been. He wasn't quite as big a threat as uh, he seemed. It seemed like, like you know, obviously Thanos seemed like a much, much bigger deal. Um, but whatever. I mean, you know, it just just another purple bad guy, um, really, <laughs> in the end, it seemed. Uh, but a lot of characters are purple or green or blue or whatever, right? So, um, so cool. Uh, that's fine with me. Uh, I think, you know, everything played out the way that it should to end this trilogy. I don't think there'll be any more Guardians of the Galaxy movies. At least I kind of doubt it anyway. Um, but uh, overall, I did enjoy the film. It is a good time at the theater and uh, i do recommend it i'm gonna give it an 8.5 out of 10 and just to let you know i saw the standard version so no 3d no you know crazy uh d-box uh motion simulator whatever's going on you know i just went to see the movie itself and i wanted to really kind of judge it by its story which was very good you know they, they did a good job of coming up with some very cool ideas uh, some critics are saying it's the best Marvel movie since Endgame, and you know that's going to be good, great marketing certainly for for uh, for Marvel for Disney. Um, but um, I don't know if that's the case. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I did like it better than Ant Man and the Wasp: uh, Quantum Mania, and I kind of like that movie. So yeah, you know, not too shabby of a third film in a series of outer space comic book insanity and comedy and uh other stuff too so yeah it was really just adam warlock wasn't that great and all the animal abuse might put some people off but otherwise it's a good time all right guys that's all for me this is neil signing off thank you once again for tuning in to another film review and until next time peace